Moving on to the next cut we're gonna be talking about, this is a jump cut. And a jump cut is where we abruptly cut forward in time within an existing clip. Uh, this can be used uh, more of a, as a stylistic choice or we're trying to create maybe some type of tension within a scene, uh, but it's basically taking uh, a shot, a, an existing clip, and just literally cutting one point and then cutting to the, say, further in time within the next shot. And it, 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 it is abrupt, but we're doing it for a reason. And, and so it, we're gonna use, again, our short film over time and, and show you in this case why I chose to, to do jump cuts. Ralph is now has gotten home uh, and he realizes that uh, the reason uh, his co-workers were trying to keep him at the office is because they were planning a surprise party for him. And that is where we end the film. Uh, so let's take a look at the, the, the final description of the scene. It says, unable to resist the change any longer, Ralph's body heaves and contorts. He lifts his head and opens his eyes. Golden and menacing, a terrifying roar is unleashed from, from behind his razor sharp fangs. So let's just now look at that section without any jump cuts. We're just gonna play it uh, using the existing footage, uh, but still following this script. So here you go. We are doing what the script says, right? And it's, it's okay. We see him contort. Uh, we see him, you know, uh, he's, we see his razor sharp fangs. But how can we enhance this? How can we make it more uh, terrifying, more dramatic? Uh, now, using the existing footage, right? So then if I, this is the clip that I have, I'm using what, I, what was shot. They, they didn't get, say, anything else uh, showing uh, Ralph contorting. Uh, this is what we have, and this is what we have to work with. The first thing that I thought about was say, well, maybe I can just do some jump cuts. I can just take that existing shot, which is of, um, in this case, uh, Ralph as a werewolf contorting, but I'm gonna enhance it by just kind of jumping forward into that same shot, creating more of a fast paced rhythm, maybe adding some sound effects as well to enhance that. And then maybe as we then go into that extreme close up, see how we can make some, create some movement that'll push us into that shot that was not necessarily captured in camera. So now I am going to remove any section out of this clip that does not have uh, Ralph contorting or doing anything exciting that, or anything that I could use to create uh, uh, this, this, this feeling of, 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 of terror. Um, and so I'm uh, just gonna literally start extracting all of those pieces. So I lay an in and out point in that section and it's just taken out, I extract it. So for example, like now you'll see that we just literally jump forward in time to the other part of the shot. And we just keep doing it. There's something there, he starts to move his head. So as you can see here, as, as soon as he moves his head, I wanna set my next end point because that'll be the start of the next section that I'm going to extract. There's, there's another movement there. Now the section that I'm highlighting, I'm literally just gonna extract it. I don't want it. So at the moment, it looks like this. And so we're just now creating the, the, the rhythm, right? We're gonna still keep on looking for ways to enhance this uh, feeling of, of terror, of him making, going through a change, right? He's now, this whole time throughout the film, he's been holding back, right? He's been, he's been, he's been trying to not become a werewolf. And at this point where literally now he's, he's he, that's it. He's completed his transformation. Now he's seeing all his friends there. He's trying to fight the urge to eat them <laughs> or attack them. And so I mean, he can't hold that back and he's going to yet the last transformation and we're gonna enhance that with jump cuts and then uh, further enhance that with sound effects. So now at this point, we're gonna cut to an extreme close-up of uh, Ralph's eyes, which then tilt down to his fangs. We wanna enhance then now this jump now, because it was really, you know, this extreme close-up is a very intense shot. We really wanna get his eyes, but we, how can we propel 
the viewer into that? How we, can we create that movement that was not necessarily captured on camera? Well, I'm gonna create still a jump cut, but I'm gonna now uh, apply another technique, which is to uh, resize that existing shot to create movement going forward. So I just gotta pick a section that I want to uh, resize, I wanna blow up. So let's try this one. I'm literally gonna make a splice there in that existing clip, go into the effect controls and resize it. Maybe if it's at 31% right now, I don't know, let's try 50. We're gonna extend here our adjustment layer so we get those uh, black bars. Instead of going just simply using a, a, a normal cut, we're using our footage to create what is a, known as a jump cut and creating more momentum. Be able to say identify this, right? When at times where you are looking at your, your dailies, your footage, and you say, well, they didn't capture this. They didn't capture that movement, that push in. Well, how can we create that with what we have? And it's in this case, it's uh, by using a jump cut. So now we have this set up. Let's take it further now by adding sound effects. So in this case, uh, Ralph is contorting. So maybe we want, uh, you know, bones crunching, right? Hear that uh, to further enhance that, that transformation. Oh, that was good. Got some good crunch there. So maybe we start putting these sound effects right at those cuts, see how that works. So now we're really feeling him contorting, right? We're enhancing that with sound effects. The, these sounds we just took out of a library, right? But it's getting creative, right? We're thinking, right, body contorting, well, uh, hear that neck cracking. Uh, so let's get some uh, bones crunching, right? And now we further enhance those cuts, that feeling of him transforming more into a werewolf. We've seen him now see his friends. What's gonna happen? Is he gonna attack them or what? And so at this point, we start feeling, oh my God, this is, this is not gonna go well uh, for our friends and family. Then this next section, can we further then also enhance that push in into his eyes? Um, and in this case, maybe we start thinking a little bit outside the box, right? Don't have to be so maybe literal with sounds. We just want something impactful something that, uh, again, further enhances that, that pushing. We're, we're jump cutting something like, a, like metal. Let's use that. I use it in one instance there, but as you can see, there's two cuts. So let's just use it twice. Let's check it out. Now you're really feeling like, okay, this is, this is going to go down, right? It's not going to be, <laughs> this is not good. Uh, Ralph is about to become a werewolf. So now let's take a look at how we've uh, changed the feeling of the scene using jump cuts and also incorporating sound effects. So there you go, jump cuts. I mean, you know, such a difference, right, from our original version, uh, using jump cuts in this case, and then also uh, using sound effects further intensified this scene. So it's really important to identify, uh, say, these techniques and how you can use them to further enhance your story, especially at a time where, say, maybe production didn't uh, capture what you were expecting or maybe what you wanted. Uh, in this case, maybe you wanted actually the camera to, to push in or maybe get some other angles. Well, they didn't get that. So what can we do with what we have? Well, in this case, I decided to use a jump cut to further enhance the story and make it much more intense. We've been talking about hard cuts, more abrupt cuts, and now we're gonna be talking about a soft cut. Well, a soft cut, uh, really what it entails is adding a dissolve between shots, say uh, between three and five frames, really short. It, it is not adding, say, a complete uh, you know, dissolve, say like a second where we're, we're really advancing forward in time that much. 
It's just a matter of softening a hard cut and we do this by adding a really, really quick uh, dissolve. So we're gonna jump to the moments where we use those jump cuts and we're gonna start adding really quick dissolves. Cause maybe in this case, maybe I wanna try something that is more of a maybe dreamlike sequence, right? Uh, in this case where um, Ralph is going uh, through a transformation of becoming a, a werewolf, right? So I wanna explore that. Maybe I don't wanna make it as intense. So we go to our jump cut. In this case, we add, uh, I'm gonna add a five frames there, a five frame dissolve, uh, and just keep doing it. This is just me trying something else out. You know, again, uh, figuring out what story do I want to tell, what emotion do I want, do I want to bring out of this scene. And it's me uh, trying out, say in this case, soft cuts instead of jump cuts to see uh, what is it that I, I then feel from this scene, right? But so let's check it out. Let's compare these, uh, both of these scenes. One using jump cuts, abrupt jump cuts, and then this one uh, using uh, soft cuts. Ralph. So there you go, two different uh, feelings there, two different, uh, you know, same scene, uh, and just by adding, a, a, in this case, a, a short dissolve uh, to create a soft cut where we used to have jump cuts, it, it creates a different feeling. What type of emotion are you trying to bring out of the scene? So there's no wrong or you know, right answer, it's, but at least we know what we can do uh, with the tools that we have.